The quiet town of Highlands Ranch, Colorado became the backdrop for a chilling narrative that unfolded through the life of Harold Henthorn. A seemingly ordinary man, Henthorn found himself thrust into the spotlight when the deaths of not one, but two wives raised eyebrows and suspicions. Sandra Lynn Henthorne and Tony Henthorne, the two women who shared their lives with Harold, met tragic fates under mysterious circumstances. Harold Henthorne, born in 1956, appeared to be leading a typical suburban life in Colorado, with a respectable job and a seemingly happy family life. He was far from the stereotypical image of a criminal mastermind. However, normalcy shattered when the death of his wife Tony brought him under the scrutiny of law enforcement and the public, uncovering long-buried secrets. According to 48 Hours, Harold Henthorne encountered Dr. Tony Bertoli from Jackson, Mississippi via a dating platform named Christian Matchmakers in 1999. Tony was born on January the 10th, 1962, in Jackson, Mississippi. Bertoli had recently undergone divorce proceedings, while Henthorne had experienced the loss of his wife in a tragic accident four years earlier. In September 2000, they tied the knot, subsequently relocating to Denver, Colorado, and embracing the arrival of their daughter, Haley. In 2006, Tony earned recognition as one of America's top ophthalmologists by the Consumer Research Council. Tony actively participated in Cherry Hills Community Church, where she both attended and taught Sunday school. Additionally, she showcased her talents as an accomplished pianist and singer, contributing to various church choirs. Despite the appearance of a thriving marriage, signs of worry emerged in Tony's demeanour, noticed by her close friends and family members. Tony's brother, Barry, found it impossible to have private conversations with his sister, as Harold Henthorne consistently intercepted Barry's calls, and if he wished to speak with Tony or Haley, Harold would promptly switch to speakerphone. Red flags began appearing when Tony told her mother about an incident which took place in 2011. During construction work at the couple's mountain cabin, Harold requested Tony's assistance on the porch. As she walked beneath it, a hefty beam dislodged, striking her neck and fracturing her vertebrae. During September of 2012, Harold Henthorne opted to commemorate their 12th anniversary by taking 50-year-old Tony on a hike in Rocky Mountain National Park, despite the unusual choice given his wife's problematic knee, which typically deterred her from engaging in any sorts of strenuous exercises or hikes. It was the 29th of September 2012, and Harold and Tony began their ascent up Deer Mountain. They hiked approximately two miles, taking many photographs on a camera along the way. That afternoon, Tony's brother, Barry, received a chilling message from his brother-in-law. Barry, urgent. Tony is injured. In Estes Park. Fall from rock. Shortly after this, another message was received. She's gone. At Estes Park, Tony had fallen over 128 feet to her death. A post-mortem confirmed Tony's horrific injuries. She had broken her neck, had been scalped, and had bled to death, leaving very little blood for the coroner to obtain for testing. The coroner concluded that Tony, quote, fell or was pushed down a cliff. The manner of death is undetermined. Homicide cannot be excluded. Harold told Barry that Tony was having trouble on the hike and she vanished from his sight. He then allegedly turned and saw Tony's lifeless body at the bottom of the cliff. Suspicions began to rise when Harold changed his story about what had happened. He stated that Tony fell as he received a message on his phone and missed what had actually occurred on the edge of Deer Mountain. Furthermore, he then claimed that Tony was taking a photo of him and then tragically fell. 
As his story continued to warp and change, the authorities had little doubt that Harold was somehow involved in the death of his wife. Investigators scoured Henthorne's jeep and discovered a map featuring a pink X pinpointing the location where Tony went over at the edge. Tony's loved ones looked back on the 2011 beam accident with fresh eyes and were suspicious that perhaps it wasn't an accident at all. Then, both their and law enforcement's focus shifted to the accidental death of Lynn Henthorne, Harold's first wife. Following Tony's death, authorities received correspondence and calls from 16 individuals urging them to probe Harold Henthorne's involvement in Tony's passing, along with the accidental death of 37-year-old Sandra Lynn Henthorne in May of 1995, who was crushed by their Jeep Grand Cherokee. The death of Sandra Lynn Henthorne marked the beginning of a tragic saga that would later unravel, exposing a disturbing pattern in the life of her husband, Harold Henthorne. Born on August 5th, 1957 in Alexandria, Virginia, Sandra Lynn Rochelle, known as Lynn, was by all accounts a beloved member of her community. The events surrounding her untimely demise, initially deemed a tragic accident, would be re-examined under a more sceptical lens decades later. Lynn and Harold's life appeared idyllic on the surface. The couple, married for several years, decided to spend a day enjoying the beauty of Rocky Mountain National Park. Little did her loved ones know that this excursion would turn into a life-altering tragedy. On that fateful day, the 7th of May 1995, as the couple embarked on a hike, nature took a tragic turn. Henthorne claimed that he and his wife were travelling on Highway 67 in Douglas County at night when he noticed a softness in the right front tyre. Stopping to address the issue, he asserted that Lynn crawled under the jeep to retrieve a lug nut. According to Henthorne, the jack slipped, resulting in the vehicle landing on her. Tragically, she passed away early the following morning. The Douglas County Sheriff's Department concluded its investigation six days later, attributing her death to an accident. As the sole witness, Harold Henthorne received nearly half a million dollars in life insurance following his wife's death. Lynn's family harboured immediate suspicions. They pointed out that Lynn suffered from arthritis and was unlikely to attempt bending down for the lug nut. Moreover, they emphasised her cautious nature, highlighting that she knew better than to crawl beneath a vehicle. Additionally, they questioned Harold's account, citing the gravel road and disputing the likelihood of the lug nut rolling as far beneath the jeep as he'd claimed. However, as the events surrounding the death of Tony Henthorne, Harold's second wife, unfolded years later, investigators revisited the circumstances of Lynn's death with a more critical eye. What had initially appeared as a tragic accident now seemed eerily similar to the second incident, raising questions about the nature of both events. The forensic examination of Lynn's death began to reveal discrepancies and inconsistencies that demanded further investigation. The seemingly coincidental parallels between the deaths of the two women, coupled with Harold's actions and behaviour in the aftermath, prompted law enforcement to re-evaluate the events surrounding Lynn Henthorne's tragic end. As investigators dug deeper, they uncovered a crucial piece of the puzzle. Harold Henthorne had taken out a substantial life insurance policy on Lynn shortly before her death. The financial motive added a layer of complexity to the case, suggesting that there might be more to Sandra Lynn's demise than initially met the eye. Her case was subsequently reopened, however no charges were brought. Lynn's family, initially grieving the loss of their loved one, found themselves grappling with the unsettling possibility that her death might not have been the result of a tragic accident. 
The re-examination of the circumstances surrounding Lynn's demise not only cast a shadow over her memory, but also opened the door to a broader investigation into the man who had been at her side that fateful day. Lynn's family told the media, quote, Tony's death and subsequent investigation have renewed long dormant questions about Lynn's death. Believing it is more than justified, we are grateful that an investigation into Lynn's case has been reopened. We continue to hope that the truth will come to light in the deaths of Tony and Lynn and that justice will be served. Further evidence from the investigation into Tony's death indicated that Harold had misrepresented his fundraising business and failed to report any income for several years. Moreover, he had obtained three life insurance policies amounting to over four and a half million dollars on Tony. Forensic evidence and expert analysis further cast doubt on the supposed accidents, leaving investigators with a myriad of unanswered questions and a growing sense of unease. Henthorne's carefully constructed facade of grief and innocence began to crumble under the weight of mounting evidence. The timeline of events, the financial incentives and the eerie similarities between the two incidents led investigators to reclassify the deaths as suspicious and raise the possibility that they were intentional and premeditated acts. In 2014, Harold Henthorne was arrested and charged with first-degree murder for the death of his second wife, Tony. The trial that ensued unfolded like a gripping courtroom drama, laying bare the intricate details of Henthorne's life and the circumstances surrounding the deaths of Lynn and Tony. Prosecutors painted a damning picture of a man driven by greed, alleging that Henthorne orchestrated both deaths to collect hefty insurance payouts. The defence, however, clung to the narrative of tragic accidents, emphasising the lack of direct evidence linking Henthorne to foul play. The trial brought forth a parade of witnesses, forensic experts and legal arguments, each contributing to the complex tapestry of the case. The prosecution highlighted the insurance policies, the forensic analysis, and Henthorne's deceptive behaviour as evidence of premeditated murder. Cell phone records provided information indicating that Harold had visited the park on nine occasions within the eight weeks leading up to their trip. According to a Larimer County dispatcher, Henthorne did not seem to be administering CPR to Tony while she provided him with first aid instructions over the phone. Despite hanging up the 911 call, citing the need to conserve his phone's battery, Henthorne proceeded to make nearly two dozen calls and exchanged almost 100 text messages afterwards. According to People magazine, evidence from Tammy Abruscato, Tony's co-worker, revealed that a personal bank account, originally set up by Tony in June of 2012, was emptied on September 27th, just two days before her death. It amounted to approximately $6,800 in cash, and Tammy scrutinised the signature on the cheque countless times, and it was unmistakably not hers on the cheque. Tammy and Tony's family both agree that it seemed like Tony was beginning to break free from her overly controlled marriage to Harold. The defence countered with claims of insufficient evidence, arguing that the deaths were indeed accidents, tragic but unrelated. In 2015, the jury delivered its verdict. Guilty of first degree murder. Henthorne was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, closing a chapter on a case that had captivated the nation. Harold attempted an appeal and to get a retrial, however, these endeavours were unsuccessful. The Henthorne case stands as a chilling testament to the intricacies and challenges inherent in criminal investigations. What initially appeared as an isolated, tragic accident evolved into a narrative of deceit, manipulation and greed. As the legal proceedings unfolded, the nation watched with a mix of fascination and horror. 
The courtroom became a stage where truth and lies clashed, leaving observers to grapple with the unsettling reality that the person standing beside you, seemingly ordinary and unremarkable, could harbour unimaginable secrets. The case serves as a sombre reminder that, beneath the facade of normalcy, lies a complex web of human emotions, desires and actions that can unravel lives in the most tragic and unforeseen ways.